Good morning. My name is Cynthia Gertzen. I am the manager of teaching artist strategy and implementation in the Kennedy Center's education division. I am so pleased to welcome you today to our session, Anishwar Kanchala Youth Poetry for Change. We are delighted to have an opportunity to have an interview conducted by DC Youth Poet Laureate Sophia Hall with our incredible River Run Festival guest artist and activist, Anishwar Kunchala. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to do a brief bio of Miss Hall for you. And then after that, we're going to see a video. I'll direct your attention to a video to introduce our incredible young person, our conservationist here. So Sophia Hall lives a double life. 17-year-old poet by day, secret agent by night. This US presidential scholar nominee can be found wearing a frog bucket hat and Van Gogh socks. Her writing has been recognized by the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, the Library of Congress, and several other organizations. Her poem, Multiple Choice, won the grand prize in the 16 River Press Youth Poetry Contest and was subsequently nominated for the Pushcart Prize. In 2022, she won the Smith College Poetry Prize for high school girls, selected by Layla Chati. Sophia is also the Art and Social Justice Fellow with Strathmore Arts Center and Woolly Mammoth Theater. Her haiku, selected from 2,900 submissions from 71 countries, has been displayed in prominent locations in the Washington, D.C. business district. She posts her writing and artwork on her Instagram account, at Estelle Euphoria, reaching an audience of over 100,000 users. I think I have maybe four people that follow me. She will be attending the University of Pennsylvania in the fall where she was recruited for creative writing. So we should give her a hand. <laughs> These are two very remarkable young people. So now please direct your attention to the video introducing us to guest artist, activist, multi-hyphenate conservationist, Anishwar Kanchala. When my teacher showed me a picture of a dead whale dying from the plastic pollution. This has changed my life ever since I was four years old. Later I had a chat with my mum and my dad of how to save this beautiful nature. I was attached in nature from a very young age and it feels quite natural for me to do this. I really like poetry. I sometimes make my own poems. I also really love doing paintings. And I'm not scared of cameras, so I can do videos. While we were all discussing, we all thought of something. We could spread the awareness through poetry, my paintings, my documentaries, and many more. Every time when I walk out into nature, it just feels so good. It gives so much inspiration. And just imagine if all of this nature just disappears, the animals become extinct, the trees won't be around anymore. It just will lose all our inspiration about the planet. What I love about the nature is it's like a living factory of animals which climb, which swim, and which fly. Like the planes, they are designed after the birds, the batteries after the electric eels, and lots more. Like too many to name, and that's what I really love about creatures. They are living inspiration for our world, and that's why I just love nature. Well, I'd love to do many more documentaries and conserve our lovely planet. And I really want to spend time in the nature 
observe the wildlife and try to keep it in balance. And also have fun! That was an amazing video. I'm just so honored that I have the opportunity to interview you and have a conversation with you and help share your message of conservation with everyone here at the Kennedy Center today. Well, I'm really happy to be here as well. So, like, yes, yeah, go ahead. I'm really happy to be here in front of you all and spread my message to you all. So, please enjoy. How is everyone doing today? Yeah, we're feeling happy. Thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle. Yeah, that's what we like to see. I'm a thumbs up myself. So as we just saw in the video, you first got your inspiration to start spreading awareness about conservation from seeing that picture of a dead whale. How did you feel when you first saw that picture? So well, I felt really sad when I actually saw it and just Hearing about it died made me feel really sorrow, but because it was made from plastic, something we made and we must rethink, I really felt like it was our responsibility. That will was on the line and we just let it go. Yeah, it's really sad and plastic is a man-made material. And we as humans, we play a unique role in nature. Could you tell us more about that? So, well, we have a unique role in nature because we, as humans, are very smart. We are the smartest animals on the planet. And we need to use that smarts for good, not bad. So let's all work together and save our planet. Can we get a few cheers for that? Yes. So I'm 17. How old are you, Anishwar? I'm eight. How old is everyone in the audience? Just shout it out. So we have a wide range of ages here. I heard a quote the other day that said, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And I guess it goes to show and reflect that no matter what age you are, you can make a difference and take the first step in saving the planet. So do you think age at all plays a difference? Well, that's a definite no. Because, firstly, I'm right here doing my thing. And Sir David Attenborough is way up there in the scale, helping doing his bit to save our nature. So why would I even be here if age contributes to where you're going and how you do something. So I believe that however old you are or however young you are, you all have your very own bit to save our planet. So please use that bit and then you'll be able to help save our world. So what's your bet? How have you contributed so far in raising awareness about conservation? Could you say that again? Like, I didn't catch that. Yeah, of course. How have you been raising awareness about conservation so far? So I've been raising awareness through conservation and lots more. And, well, I'm really thinking that that is one way of doing it because we it'll just be one powerful way and there's many more ways like using my poetry my art and my documentaries like i said don't forget my nature talks and well my litter picking could you please direct your attention to the screen because now we'll see a short video all about anishwar's writing and painting
with my nature journals. You get to observe the animals close up and if you draw it, you can understand more details. I got into nature journaling by just painting other people's drawings and that's how I got into nature journaling. Look what I did. I finished my daffodil picture. My favourite entry in my nature journal, I would say the penguin falcon, because it's the fastest bird on earth. And it's also my favourite animal. Raise your hand if you've ever made a nature journal before. Oh my gosh, we have a few hands raised. Good job, you guys. And now raise your hand if you want to make a nature journal in the future. Okay, yeah, feel inspired. So Anishwar, we learned a lot about your nature journaling in that video. When did you first make your first entry? Well, I think it was when I, I was four to five, I think somewhere in my six years, hmm. when I drawn a picture of the earth with everyone holding a hand and every single person was unique. And it was just amazing. And all the animals and the house, it was like everything was in balance. And that's where I really want everything to be. Wild animals and humans living together and living in harmony. So let's all try to save our planet and make that happen. What do you think some of the benefits of nature journaling are? So, well, you can, like, sometimes, example, a spider. All of you are scared of spiders, right? Oh, you guys are brave. Yeah, like, some people think spiders are just bloodthirsty creatures, right? But it's actually not true. They just bite when they are scared. They don't want to take any blood from you but just accidentally venom goes into them just as a defense. So they're just min misunderstood and we are, we're going into their habitat and they think, yeah. we're thinking that they are coming into our habitat. So it's us who are actually interfering with them and they are not even interfering with us. It's just we are like cornering them. And what would you do when you are cornered? You'll defend yourself, right? That's what the spider's doing. He's trying to defend himself, and that's why they accidentally inject the venom. They don't want to hurt you. They're just trying to put a warning, but if that doesn't work, they strike. So right. it's just creatures which are misunderstood. When you're nature journaling, you can actually see how majestic and beautiful those creatures can be. So are you all with me? My mom always told me that whenever I got scared of spiders that they were just a friend. They were just a friend I hadn't met yet. So I hope when you nature journal, you can study animals and plants. And if, even if you are scared of them, you can say, oh, hi, that's a friend I haven't met yet. Is that right? Yeah. And when you're nature journaling, you must spend a lot of time outside and looking at plants and animals. Is that right? Yes. And you have like an in-depth look and you have to study every aspect of them. Do you ever study more than just what they look like? Do you ever maybe study what they sound like? I definitely do. And would you like to hear some bird calls, animal calls, and some dinosaur calls? Of course. So, so would you like to get scaly, a bit furry, or a bit flappy? Flappy. Okay, do you want to hear a common bird or a not that common bird? Would you like to hear the bald eagle call? Yes. The peregrine falcon. And the pigeon call. That's the easiest 
is cool you could do. And actually, maybe I could teach you that one right this right now. So all you got to do is do this. All you do is breathe out and do. Make it so it's a bit of a bellow, just like that. Yeah, now you're getting it. And if you actually want to, you could vibrate your tongue to get it like this. Yeah, you're getting it. That's how you do a pigeon call. And now let's get a bit more furry with stuff. Do you want to get furry, guys? Yeah. Uh. Do you want to get a bit more stripy or a slightly more hairy? Hairy. Okay, let's hear the lion call. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lion in the room with us right now? <laughs> That's a male lion call as a fact. Is it different than the female lion call? Uh, not that sure. I only know the male lion call. Um, would you like to get a bit more stripey? Stripey. Do you want to hear a tiger? Would I? Yes. <laughs> Sorry that I freaked some of you, but... <laughs> Raptor time. <coughs> Anishwar, how do you know what a raptor sounds like? Actually, you know Jurassic World? We actually, I actually learned how to mimic those raptors, especially Raptor Blue. Wow. And how did you learn the lion and the tiger call? Actually, I used to think a lion was a... <coughs> But actually, when I started seeing documentaries, it was more, like, more of a... <coughs> mm. what, what's your favorite nature documentary to watch? Well, it could be Dead 60, but my favorite one now is Wild Isles. I love the f theme song, right? It is amazing. What recommendations would you give to the audience to watch if they wanted to start watching some more nature documentaries? So, well, just try and see something like David Attenborough programs mm -hmm. and Deadly 60, maybe even Deadly Dinosaurs. Those are top-notch ones. Amazing. I remember you said you really liked Wild Kratts, too. Is that yeah. right? Yes. I love Wild Kratts. I grew up watching them all the time, and my brother's in the audience, too. He's such a big fan. <laughs> So, I have a question for you, and it's also to help the audience. So for the people who raised their hand and said they wanted to start making nature journals, how can they start? What's the first step? Actually, it's pretty simple. All you've got to do to start a nature journal is just think of an animal. Example for me, a peregrine falcon, and then just get a picture of it somewhere. You might actually get one in a tree just sitting there, but it make, but it's easy just to get a picture. And then all you got to do is just copy that picture and maybe write the date, write the date, and maybe some facts. You don't need to make a fact to make it a nature journal. All you got to do to make it a nature journal is just to add the date and get the drawing, of course. That's the main thing about it. I'm going to start nature journaling now. You've inspired me. Thank you, Anishwar. <laughs> yeah, and any questions about anything? And I actually want to ask you something. Like, my favorite animal is the peregrine falcon. You all know that, right? What's your favorite animal? Put your hand up if you want to tell us. Yes, you in the sweater. Horse and chicken. A horse and a chicken? Cool. And I have some facts about a chicken for you. So did you know that their feet is actually like a digging machine? So they could actually dig for, you know, insects and yummy grubs. Yeah. Yeah, and you over there near to the corner? A panda. I've actually seen that at the zoo. You did? Were you at the zoo just now? Uh, I was actually at the zoo yesterday, and they are gorgeous creatures. Do you know any facts about pandas? I know they like bamboo. 
I know something why they eat bamboo. Oh, really? You, did you know most herbivores have huge digestive systems, but pandas have really short ones as a fact? But, and how do they digest the near impossible digestible bamboo? How do they? They use bacteria. Yeah, and it turns the bamboo into energy. So pandas have superpowers themselves. Any more? That's so sad. Yeah, and I also have a fact about axolotls. I think I know what you're going to say. They can grow limbs, they can, but I think you haven't heard of this. They can grow parts of their brain. They can. Whoa. Literally. That's an insane wee grower. Does anybody At else? The back. The cheetahs! Amazing! Fast. Are they as fast as peregrine falcons? No. Cheetah can reach up to speeds of 70, but peregrine falcons 180. But I have a fact for you. It's not about the speed, it's something on its face. You know why they had that black tear thingy? Yeah. That's not actually correct. It's so they can actually see. They could like cut the sunlight so they could see their prey really well. That's a fact. Any more? Okay, right up there at the back. Uh, my favorite animal is a panda. A panda? Cool. I heard another panda, and they are gorgeous creatures. Right there at the corner near the back? A porcupine. A porcupine. That is amazing. And I have a f two facts about their quills. Firstly, their quills are just like our hair. They also have muscles underneath, and even with the slightest touch, they rip apart. So that keeps the lines at bay, at least. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> you at the corner with the unicorn head? The unicorn thingy? The unicorn horn? A butterfly, amazing. I love the life cycles of them. From a little caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. And are you talking about the monarch butterfly? It's like the one with orange wings. Orange wings and little spots, I have a fact about that one. Let's hear it. They are poisonous. Really? So if anybody eats them, it, the way they come in, they come out. Yes, you in the center. Red panda? Did you see any red pandas at the zoo yesterday? No, but I have seen at them at Chester Zoo. And do you know why they're colored red? It's because in the thick bamboo jungles, it's hard to see any other color. So red stands out a lot. So they actually, animals have their colors so they can identify each other. That's why the red panda is red, like its name says. So, any more? You right there next to your mom, I think? Right there. Pardon? Polka, like polka dots? I don't know that one. No, you have a stumped. That. I think you outsmarted me with that one. We're going to have to learn more. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Adam, you're going to have to put a drawing in Anish Shore's exhibit so that we can see all about it. <laughs> yes, definitely. But any more right there in the center behind the camera? A blue whale. A blue whale. A Beluga? Beluga or blue? Beluga, Beluga. whale. Oh, those are really cool. There's a good song about that. Baby beluga in the great blue sea. Swim so wild and swim so free. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> I, I love belugas. They're so playful. And they actually live in pods like many other whales. And they're too cute. 
even fit on my list of facts. The only cool fact about them is they are infinite cute. And they also have a big layer, they have blubber on them, which actually keeps them warm in the cold Arctic waters, I think. And it's really cold here in DC today, so I wish I had a little bit of blubber on me. Yeah, just reminding me of the walrus. <laughs> Any more? Well, maybe we'll think about oh, yeah. it. Oh, we you have one? You want to? Gazelle. Gazelle. Ooh, I love gazelles. Me too. They are a cheetah's favorite dinner. But, <laughs> yeah, but this is one cool fact about them. This is how they try to shake off a, a cheetah. Even though gazelles are, sh are slower, reaching speeds very, like somewhere in the 60 miles an hour, I don't, think. Don't gazelles sometimes outrun cheetahs? Yes, the reason is they have more stamina, just like gray wolves. And another cool fact is they, the way they try to zigzag the cheetah, the cheetah out is they try to, they do the zigzag move and it's called the zigzag. <laughs> yeah, the way they do it, imagine if you're a cheetah, get your hand up, you're a cheetah, and I'm a gazelle, you chase after me. I'll zigzag everywhere so it can't catch me. Uh -oh. And then you'll get tired, so I'll, so I'll be able to graze again. So that's how they actually do it. Get it? <laughs> that's a cool fact. Any more? Having a good look at the back. Any more? Anymore? like a walking oh, yeah. encyclopedia. A dog? Oh, dogs. They are a man's best friend. Even I have a dog. They are gorgeous. Do you have a dog? Yes, we have a cockatoo. Oh, I have a King Charles. Oh. What about cats? Cats, they, I love big cats. My favorite big cat is the tiger or the jaguar because they both are swimming cats and I love swimming. So, any more? Is that? Armadillo. Didn't you see an armadillo yesterday? Yes. Would you, do you like the six-banded armadillo or the three-banded armadillo? The six-banded has six bands, so it can curl, but it can't curl up. Yeah, the giant armadillo is the biggest species, and it's the most common, so it's the most famous one. Any more? You. A giraffe, amazing. I have a fun fact about giraffes. Sure. So a human neck has seven bones, and you know a giraffe's neck, it's really long, right? A giraffe's neck also has seven bones in it. Yeah, just extra big bones, like huge ones. I was about to tell that fact. <laughs> I stole it from you. Don't worry. <laughs> That's one very famous fact for animal knowers. Every animal, Every person who knows about animals should know that fact. Am I a certified animal knower? Yeah. Perfect. You know, yeah, actually, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal has to be the giant squid. Oh, those are amazing creatures. And I know a creature which is way bigger, the colossal squid. Giant versus colossal? Wow, I couldn't have guessed that. Yeah, and I have a fact about giant squids. Okay. Their eyes are as big as basketballs. Basketballs? Huge, like too big to be real, right? Yeah. And the reason why no one has seen a live specimen is because there are subs going, no sub could actually go so deep to see them. And the tide, which we can see, are what a dead ones washed upon the shore. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and they are in the family with the giant Pacific octopus and lots more, like non-boned, non-bony creatures. So they're in the vertebrates, is it? Vertebrates, no, no backbone creatures. Or yeah, and vertebrates. Yeah. So they're in the vertebrates. I also really like owls. My name is Sophia, which means wisdom, and owls typically are known to be wise creatures. Would you say? Yes, I actually have a cool fact about owls. So do you know there's three types? One way you can tell an owl is a daytime owl, a dawn owl, and a night owl. 
A night owl has red eyes, red pupils, I think. I see red white bits. So the white bit around our eye, I see the coloured bit, which is there, which can be any colour, but for me it's a very dark black, like a branch black, I think. It's actually the black for a owl, for a nighttime owl, and that bit is actually a orangey for a dawn owl, and for a daytime owl, that is yellow. Really? That is a really cool fact I learned very recently as a fact. Really? When did you learn it? So, like, I learned it because someone, I think someone told it me, or I think I researched it. Either way, but it's a new fact to me. So if you ever want to learn something about animals, you can research it, or you can just ask an Ishwar. <laughs> so, you with your hand raised. Penguins. Penguins, I love those. Angolans. Angolans. Pangolins. Pangolins. Oh, I love those as well. Those are pretty cool creatures. And this is a cool fact about their scales. If you run down your fingers on the wrong side, mm -hmm. you, get, you can cut your fingers. <gasps> Just that, like a shark. I, it's something like that, but do you know the pangolin scales? They're like, they have a razor sharp end this way. So if a pangolin was curled up like this, all of this way would be full of needle sharp, needle sharp plates, which are, mm -hmm. and if an animal tries to get them, they'll cut their paw. Uh oh, that's not good. I know. Any more quick questions and then? A wolf, amazing creatures. They're in the canine family as well. Uh, I've seen you with your hand up. Uh, is, are there any facts about hedgehogs? Hedgehogs? They're nocturnal. Yes, and I know another fact. So, did you, did you know that just getting a, a one single quill off a porcupine is easy peasy lemon squeezy? But just get First, you have to find the porcupine. <laughs> yeah. When you find it, it's so easy. All you got to do is just, you got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and lucky it's not a European porcupine, or it's hard to get it out. Really? Because they have barbs coming out. But let's get on to hedgehogs. <laughs> so, did you know the hedgehogs, it takes so much effort just to get one quill, one little spine out? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that does sound like a lot of work. And you have a lot of fun animal facts, as we can tell. I know. And some of them are actually in your poems, which we have a video about your poems and your documentaries. Would you, would you like to see it? Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's my first painting. It holds plants and flourishes life. Why do the tigers have to compete for their space? With the bigger oh, look. and a bigger human race. It's so sad I see. The lions lose their glory. And the elephants, they just for their ivory. All these creatures need our care. As they disappear, as we just stare. I'm here again to continue the conversation. An important lesson for our generation. All I ask is that you sit back and listen while I talk to you about my mission. Instead of Dodo, it makes me feel sad. Please help kids like me to inspire future generations and show them how they can save the animals and make sure the Earth looks beautiful because there's no other planet like Earth. I'm Anishwa and with your support, we can all hope for a better planet. Thank you. I have a request for you all. Whatever projects you take up, big or small, please keep the planet in mind because we can't revive the planet if it's too late. Signing off, Anishwa Kinshala. Oh, my favorite.
it. Look at this. I love writing poems about the beautiful planet. It got me to the final of Green Got Talent. This is the moment when the world met an East Rock. Yes. A thought came in my mind which opened the door to show everyone the beauty of life like it never before. With the help of my poems, art and documentaries, I hope I can make you love the animals on land and in the seas. I'm seven and I love every bit of this nature. And with your support, we can all hope for a better future. Thank you. Well, I really felt that was magical. Just seeing myself, it, it really, like, even just seeing myself, it inspired me to do even more. Yeah. And do you have any poetry that you'd like to share with us today? Sure. Would you like to hear my first poem? Would we? Yeah. There's no other planet like Earth. It holds plants and flourishes life. It's an amazing creation, a real inspiration. There's no other planet like Earth. The Earth gives the very best home all the way from the North Pole to South Pole, wildlife to explore, and so much more. But it's not just for us, it's for ants, the hippopotamus. The Earth should be everyone's home. It's sad that we've been getting it wrong for much, much, much too long. Cutting down trees, polluting the seas, poaching the animals for accessories. We need to stop getting it wrong. I wish you could see the Tasmanian tiger with his very special, unique attire. I hope we never get to see the giant pandas disappear and the mighty Asian elephants who all live in fear. Do not dare to wear the endangered otters, for it should really thrive in their fresh water. Let the bats and the flying squirrels glide in the open skies so that we can capture the beauty in our eyes. The magnificent foxes and the aggressive grey wolves rise and get their glory back and forests to call home and I hope to discover many more species unknown. Let the glorious peacocks dance their way and the fantastic golden eagle glide and display and the brightly coloured scarlet macaw happily squawk away. Let the yellow buttercups just bloom in the open sun for hoverflies, wasps and bumblebees to feed upon. And then I can jump and play and have lots of fun because there is no other planet like Earth. Woo! Oh my God. Wow, I'm snapping because that was such an excellent poem. And that's what we do in poetry world. We snap when we like something. Can we hear you snap? Yes, snaps for Anishwar. I thought snap. I, I can't either, don't tell them. <laughs> At least I can click. You can click? Yeah. Kind of sad. Um, so thank you for sharing your poem with us. It was so moving and we, we heard a lot of the animals that people liked referenced in your poem too. So what do you think is the power of poetry to inspire others and make change? So well, just like I said, my first poem called Hope, it really moves everybody. Like, it makes people go into a different world, a world of life and excitement. So that's why I really think that poetry is really, really powerful. And I've been hearing that you've been doing some poetry as well. Yes, I'm the DC Youth Poet Laureate. And I believe that poetry is the most powerful agent of change because it has the power to touch the heart and then change the mind. 
Yes, it actually works. It worked when I was on AGT, BGT, semi-finals, finals, and auditions. It even worked, like, in countless times. That's why I think that you should actually start doing poetry. <laughs> like, it's really simple. You don't even need to keep a rhyme in it. All you got to do is just get the flow in it. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do in a poem. Just keep the flow. <laughs> so, I gave you some advice for a poem, and maybe you'd like to try one at home, or maybe in the hotel, if you actually are in a hotel. Yeah, pick... Pick your favorite animal. We just brainstormed a few. Pick your favorite animal and then write a few fun facts about it. Maybe use some detail and describe if it's soft or if it's scaly and describe the sound it makes and just kind of bring the animal to life. That would be a fun exercise for you all to try. Yeah. For your nature journal. Yes, your that's actually going to be really nice. And I agree with you. Let's actually try and do that all. Let's all try and do that. It'll be a lot of, it'll be a big brain, it'll be a big, you know. A fun exercise for yeah, everyone to try. that's what I meant. A fun exercise that all of us can actually do something. <laughs> and at the front. What? You know how to do a seagull call? Yes. Uh, when I was at doing hide and seek in the island, I called out and a seagull actually called back. Oh, wow. Do you know how to do a seagull call on each Sure, show? and could you actually play the call? Yeah. That is amazing. Good Do job. You my seagull call. <laughs> Close. Have I seen you over there with your hand up? <laughs> so all you got to do is ah, ah, ah. I, yeah, I actually never done a crow call, so you're way better than I am. I'm, I think I need to be pra practicing that one. Can you do a duck call? What? A duck. <laughs> Whoa! Who did that? Who did that? You, you are way better. I know someone in my martial arts class could do it like... <laughs> they can do it really well. Who, who led a zoo into the Kennedy Center? <laughs> I think it was me. I definitely think it was me. Now, any more questions about anything for either of us? Yeah, let's open it up to audience questions. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll call on you and you can stand up and share your question. Yes. Just pick one. Yeah. yeah, you over there. Oh, sorry. Uh, one more question. How many kinds of butterflies do you know? So I know the monarch butterfly, the the blue morpho. I know the blue, the great blue butterfly. I know monarch. Yeah, that's my first one. Mm -hmm. That's the most common butterfly. Oh yeah, the white butterfly. It's actually called a. Cabbage butterfly, cabbage butterfly, because the caterpillars feast on cabbages, and well, I'm not much of a butterfly expert, so four main species. I also met a black butterfly, and do you know the butterfly that uses camouflage so that its outside of its wings look like eyes? Oh yeah, the the owl butterfly. I know that one. I know that one. So I know five butterflies. And Hmm, that's actually a pretty good question. I think it's the golden faced lion tamarinds because those are so jumpy. And we didn't see the lion tamarinds because we couldn't see them. My, my dad took some really good pictures of them. And mom was like trying to get something under a rock. It even looked like he was stuck doing it. But luckily he managed to get out. But they are intelligent. Those are one of the most intelligent wild animals I know. Oh yeah, I, I totally forgot my favorite one, the sand cat. Oh, that's so the cute. Sand cat. 
Then, when you see a sand cat, it's so beautiful. Right there. Um, what's your well, I think it's how fast the peregrine falcon can go. I used to think it was 200 miles an hour, but recent story, studies say that I, it actually moves at a speed of 180 miles an hour. 10 miles faster than than the bald eagle. Wow. And I've seen someone over there with their hand up. Like, you? There? I have a fun fact. Sure. Um, so, the, do you know what water bears? Water bears? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Todd Gray, do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of into a ball? Yeah, they can just like hibernate until, until uh, the situation gets better. So like they can hi hibernate for like a hundred years or more. As yes. Yes, that's how they actually came before the dinosaurs. Wow. Yes, and actually they can live in space. They they literally can survive the radioactive things in space. Any more? You, I've seen you. You're the one. Well, it could be the Everglades in Florida or the Amazon. I can't decide. I heard that Florida is pretty good because there's tons of alligators and... And crocodiles. Yeah. Actually, crocodiles? No, no, no crocodiles. Caimans. Those in the Amazon. Amazon caimans. And I've seen some... Yeah. I'm having trouble stopping using plastic. Any recommendations? So just maybe get a bottle like... A metal bottle like my WWF one, maybe? And maybe plastic bags, you know? Maybe just try to get... I'm fine with you using plastic, but try to reuse it as much as you can. Just like a plastic bottle. If you are about to throw away, think of all the creatures which might get stuck or eat it. So maybe just refill it and reuse it. You at the top again? Well, I think I'd like, like anything, anything you mean. Okay, I think I'd try to, I think if I had the power, I'd bring back all the species to what they used to be, into like thousands of them left in the wild, so. Tell us about your ideas um, to help help the animals by maybe making plastic taste bad or other ideas you have for conservation and help saving the environment? Yeah, and my best idea was a foul tasting plastic because I actually seen a sparrow trying to eat plastic right like somewhere outside near to the tents near to Kennedy Center and I really thought how could we stop that? And then I thought every animal can taste so if we have foul tastes, which can't be get off, which couldn't be, be rubbed off, actually, that would be a really good thing because they won't be able to, re to reject the taste. So they'll just reject the whole bass, the whole plastic thing. So maybe we should do that. And I see a question over there. Aw, thanks. And I have another really good idea. So I'm thinking, like, you know, artificial robots. Like, we could get a robot which is actually good at planting seeds. And I designed it after an anteater. And this is how it does it. So it's now is actually a seed, it's a seed planter. And the front claws actually dig into it, and it has these little sucking holes, which actually get it into the middle of the body, and then it then it'll turn a propeller, which turns the movement into energy, and then 
When it plants the seed, it'll have enough time to move and while it digs the next, next one, it'll come out and it'll plant it again. And then the back one would actually cover it so it's nice and flat. You know, a lot of current inventions that humans have made, they've been inspired by animals. Do you have a few examples of that? Hmm, actually I do. Do you know my favourite animal, the peregrine falcon? It has inspired jet planes, which can move super fast and also are quite agile. And don't forget the dragonfly hummingbird, I think. They have inspired helicopters, right? Because they can hover in one place and helicopters can hover in one place, so it's much easier to get one place quicker. And what message should we take away from your documentaries that you've made? So I think it's that we must save the animals. All animals are beautiful and we need to save these, this wonderful earth. Yes, and after this panel, please come to Studio J and see Anishwar's immersive interactive art exhibit where you can draw a picture of your own favorite animal, put it up on the art wall. And what else is there, Anishwar? Well, actually, there's tons of umbrellas all around the place. And if you want to, you can actually see some where I get, got this beauty, the gold blue peach bag, and, well, how I got this beauty. I love your pins. They're gorgeous. Thanks. Yes. So please stop by Studio J, and thank you so much for spending your early morning with us. Thank, thank you. you.